Hello, world. Patricia O'Connor, and let's see if I can uh, let's see if I can find the dog in the house. Can you find the dog in the picture? Find Elmo. Find Frida. And Frida Reba Darcy here, looking in all the wrong places. That's okay. That's all right. You you were on your mark. That's all that matters. Uh, what we got going on is a couple of little small pines. These are some of the ones that uh, uh, actually the uh, the little cascade or semi cascade has been up on the has been up on the table here in the last couple of weeks already. I'm kicking around uh, doing a little top chop on it. Uh, just a little candle removal. But then we also have uh, other things to do to other uh, other little pines. So I brought in I brought in four and I and I just looked I just looked at the balcony and I grabbed four little pines, uh, three of them that I haven't had a chance to look over, you know, like what we've been doing the last couple of videos I've been bringing in. Some of the trees that I haven't uh, spent that much time with while I was down with the creeping crabs there for a minute. And now, that you know, but I was keeping up with my feeding and stuff, but I wasn't spending any personal time with them. And they were growing and the, th the weather was changing and all that stuff, which was kind of what led to my... Uh, I was having really huge sinus infections because of uh, how great the freaking weather was, of all things. So, in short story long, I've got some catch-up. To do and it's been mostly fun um you go wow that's grown a lot we can then fold this up a little more or we can cut these buds back or we can do so um just in a few minutes that i've had these i've kind of gotten some ideas that one or two of them i might not be doing too much too after all but then one or two of them one of them is kind of going to be risky a little i'm going to try to put some motion in something and you you know how I am when it comes to the motion, but uh, we're we're gonna go in and be careful about it and see just see if we can figure out how pliable everything is, and then if that works out, we may just hook a wire to an existing wire and continue and continue a wire run up the trunk of the little pine tree and put some motion in it, whether it and any. So that's that's kind of what's going on. I've already. Um, poked a couple of dog treats down my uh partner so uh i guess we're ready to start um i haven't yeah there we go i was gonna say i hadn't kicked the camera but then that's it this guy oh man i had so much fun making this guy but i don't want it to get leggy uh we don't want it to go up this way we kind of want it to go that way but not only that um i want to slow the growth down i, I want to deliberately try to keep this guy they keep this guy small and it's looking really good. So all I really intend to do to this is I'm just going to take this candle up here in the top. We're going to go in and, and just cut that guy right out of there. Uh, like it's like, it, like nobody's business, she says. Get it? Okay. Yeah, some uh, some needles, some needles were uh, chopped in that. That wasn't really easy to get in there. All right. I think all of this is doing good. I would like to see more of these little buds pop out. While I've got my scissors handy, uh, so this is. This is the uh, bio gold food. I'll probably put more down uh, on this tree. In other words, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to treat it like a. Uh... See, the thing is, if you don't have a tree in a bonsai pot, or if you have your tree in the ground, I don't know how much I don't know how much sense it would make if you were just fattening up your tree. I don't know how much sense it would make to uh, to necessarily do your candle pruning and all that stuff. Here's why. Because if it's in the ground, it has unlimited resources, which would sort of nullify uh, why you would cut the candles. So this guy, 
is uh, not, and, and, and along those same lines, I should say, this little guy is not in a bonsai pot. It has more resources because it's got this oversized pot and that allows, and whereas that allows for, uh, for all of that much more root development, that also, that also means, oh, excuse me, y'all, that also, let me see, I got this. That also means that um, we're not restricting the roots back, so there's no real point in doing the candle treatment like that. So what I am going to do, though, is cut the top out of this pot a little more than this and uh, expose more of the top of uh, this guy. I want to expose... I would like to expose a little bit more of the plug that I know that's in there on all of these than what I have going there. Uh, I've been seeing the way that's been working out on my others. And if anything that, I, that I'm that i looking at now and thinking that uh, you didn't do that as much to, I'm gonna go back and fix that. Cause that was like, you did that part right. Well, that's not to say that uh, this whole batch, I would say, is, has been um, has been really pleasing. I have really enjoyed folding up these little guys. Um, thinking that might be the top on this one too. Look at that. The idea is, is to expose more of the plug and I am exposing the wires underneath that I used. I must have planted that way deep. But you can see the motion I have coming out of the ground here. That's that much is pretty is pretty happening. All right, how much more would I have to go before I would see the plug rising up? Just now, I'm starting to now. Okay. I'm still in, yeah, we're still in friend. Clear some of that out. All right. Okay, so in the chasm there, you can see there's the plug exposed. We're just now getting there. Take it down, taking it down a little more. It was a um, really nice day at work today. The temperatures were so nice. I stayed busy 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 and uh it was kind of a busy day too but uh i guess everybody was just out enjoying the weather but uh today's days like today make working fun it was i really i did i had a good time working today okay I think we've gotten, I think we achieved pretty much what I wanted to do. There's that, I think those wires are a little bit more exposed than I wanted them to be, but that doesn't seem, that has no effect on on the work that I already did. I need to find some other way to anchor that. At some point I might run a staple, which is basically, you know, or a bow peep, I think is the, uh, 
is what you call it, a bow peep, which is a wire that you just use as a bobby pin kind of a thing. Now I could, uh, no, I'm liking that, guys. I'm pretty much liking that. Now, this is getting a little laggy here. I might, uh, I think we're okay. I think we're gonna call that, I think we're gonna call that enough on that guy. Now, let's see, this, oh no, where'd it go? There it is. This piece of wire here might come in handy for something that I'm thinking I'm about to embark on. All right, break this back a little bit. And, there and we'll bring this guy to the forefront boom so let's look at this guy here I like I like what it does coming out of the ground I like I like right up until pretty much where I stopped and at that point we're looking at that we're looking at that much also the whole thing might could I don't know I, it might be okay if I continue going like that but I'm not totally convinced that this is okay all right we're gonna try it what would I have to do to get the whole tree in frame Pat uh, fold it would probably do it. Hmm. Stay out of the way there, little bud. I'm going to try to bend that into a, a better hook to start off with. Get these pliers out of the way of that. Okay. All right, now. Um, I think that's one of yours there, Frida. Okay, so we just got a little lap of wire around there without uh, without a whole lot of drama. Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, increase our uh, kicker a little bit. That that is uh, a kicker. All right, and then she and then just to celebrate the light, she kicks the camera again. Uh, come on. I was wishing I had framed that up well enough to get the top of this thing. The top of this pine looks like wood stock. Uh, I was looking at it earlier, and I definitely had an idea in mind when I saw it, and I'm trying to remember what the idea... Yeah, I think it was this. The idea was to... Uh, try to stay in frame unlike a couple of videos ago mm
Uh-uh. Stay. Is that where my hook is? Yeah. Pat, your hook slipped. That needed two. It can be two. No, probably not now. Now, you're going to have to live with that. I'm not going to be able to get a second wire in there now. Or can she? Okay. I, um, I'm not the best loser. I mean, if I lose, I lose, you know, right? No, no biggie there. I won't say I'd. I won't say I did if I didn't. That's that's not what I mean. But um I, on, on the other hand uh I'll I'll yeah. I'll keep going on something. And you're also about to wire that in the wrong direction, so just don't do that. All right. Where is that bud that you're trying not to hurt? There we go. What did, what did that just do? It's like, wow, I just lost that whole war. Typically, when I do two wires, I'll do them in tandem. I mean, at the, yeah, in tandem at the same time, right there. Ah, yes, that's what in tandem means. When is that start and stop? Okay, got that. Where are you? You're okay? Okay. And and if that would go down, I would love that. There. Now, uh, any of these things up in here, tweezers? Pat, you got any tweezers up here in all this mess? Yeah, there we go. Let's see, the carnage. Okay, so 
I wrapped one wire around there and I didn't get the motion that I wanted out of it. I got maybe maybe 40% of the motion that I wanted out of there. That made up figure, but that was that feels about right. And um, um so then I did the uh difficult task of going in there and wrapping a second wire around something that had just bent just enough to make it weird. But we got away with it. We got the motion in there that we wanted to do, and that's a lot more interesting than it just going straight up, where it just had been going straight up. So, yeah. I kind of like what that one's doing, too. All right. All right, I'm gonna hold off on I'm gonna hold off on any uh, on any bud pruning on that until I see how that how that does. I think we're okay. I don't I don't think I don't think we broke anything. We might have stressed out part of the trunk where I bent it hard three times, but uh, it it wasn't doing something it wouldn't do. It just had to do it more times than I wanted to. I wanted to bend it and set it instead. I bent it three times, which felt kind of weird. So maybe we'll just quit with that on that one. Otherwise, otherwise I still feel like I still feel like that's pretty good. Maybe maybe kick this back that way. Yeah. Why well, say enough is enough when you can just pushing your luck. It's got some. I got a little in there. I can get more in that. There. There. I do. That. The difference in subtlety. I like. I likey. Maybe if I got some of that. There we go. And it's a little top heavy. Some of this, about that much of that guy needs to come out. I'll go ahead and do it. Don't be such a chicken. Okay. Smells so good. Okay. A little cleanup. Excited about these little buds down here. Doing that little top job up there should uh, tell the big wigs that are in charge of uh, allocation that, uh, that these guys are maybe a little bit more important than what you'd been thinking before. Maybe we should get together and throw a little bit more energy their way. I've got some I've got some wire left over up here in the top, so that if that decides to do something or if we decide to do something with it. We can, otherwise I'm pretty happy with this after not being happy with the way that it, it stuck up, it's kind of straight up before. Yeah. I wonder if an angle, but this guy comes out of the ground real good too. This little pine does, it does, it's got good motion, it comes out of the ground way over in there, it just, coils out of the ground that way and then and then makes a whole lap before before you even see it good all right another little canyon tree so i'm happy with that i'm happy with that i think i've just kind of taken both of these guys those guys up to the next level a little bit <clears throat> 
This one was from what I'll probably call the orphan batch. They were especially fun to bend on because they were especially small. It was like, uh, it was a little like wiring, wiring toothpicks. And uh, they didn't look to be in the best of shape when they got there. So the feeling was that uh, we didn't have Jack to lose, and uh, I went to town and did and had the most fun bending those little guys. And some of them have uh recovered nicely, most of them actually recovered nicely from uh long shipping and uh, and just all in all, a bad trip from Florida where they came from. But I've got, uh, I think, six of these guys. And you can see that it's way, way smaller little pine tree than the three that I just showed you before. Those were in a different batch and they were all that healthy. These came from this batch and they were all, they were all like this. And I pretzeled them up just like I did the others. And their little root plugs are exposed. And this one had three heads. It had it absolutely made three heads, and I and I think that both of, in what you see, in the two uh, apexes there, I think is a little um, too light for me to go wiring on. It would almost be like me to wire them both and and keep the one that lived survive the wiring, but uh, I'm just gonna let that go a little while longer. And then at some point when I think I can get a piece of wire on there without just tearing it up, uh, I'll kind of play around with a few ideas, maybe drop one of them down, maybe, you know, bend one of them back or something. I don't think I'll just have it sitting there like two toes sticking up like that. But you can also see it's got the exposed root work. I've got this one double boxed. So there's substrate in this bottom carton here and the roots are more than happy to just, you know, tuck and run. When they get out of the bottom there and want to fill in the bottom here, that's absolutely fine. And at some point, I'll probably expose this farther down as I become aware that there's more, you know, maybe when I see roots come out of the bottom of the bottom carton, then that would be a good time to start cutting the top of this one down too. But like the other one, since we're giving it all the substrate, that it basically needs uh, cutting away the top to expose the roots isn't the same thing to my way of thinking as as like a bonsai pot. We're not restraining our roots any. If nothing else, they're allowed to scape out the bottom and, and run to their neighbor's yard if they want to. Um, not really, but yeah. So there's no point in doing like candle work to these little guys. Unless I'm just going to try to keep the whole tree small uh, by chopping the candle. Uh, the literatis, it makes sense to do that with because I want to keep them skinny too. Uh, you don't want the candles to get big and help to fatten up the tree. Um, yeah, it's just in keeping with my overall idea. The trees are probably, I don't know, at some point maybe limited to uh, how long. You know, I mean, it's kind of like how long can you how long can you do uh, ballet? How long can you uh, you know? There are a lot of things that that uh, are not necessary. Well, like, I'm not, who am I to say that something in forever? But I'm thinking that when a lot literati gets really fat and stuff, it's probably starting to lose some of its literati appeal. I don't know. I don't know how you get around that. I don't know how you keep a tree skinny if it ages. So. I'll learn. If there's a way, we'll we'll figure it out. And it might be just, you know, and I'm not comfortable totally with uh, starving anything so that it'll achieve dimensions that, uh, that we feel that we need, you know. If we can feed it and take care of it and uh, let it feel like it's thriving and then at the same time uh, bend it and fold it and make it look like it's been through, oh, holy heck, then uh, I love all of that, you know. Uh, maybe the tree does too, for all I know. Maybe, you know, uh, I wouldn't count on it, but I don't think that 
being wired and being bent and folded by me is probably the most fun for a tree, but I certainly am enjoying it, and they certainly are, it certainly is working for them. I uh, try to make sure that they stay, that they stay uh, happy and healthy and uh And we have done that. Now, earlier on, I had I had one pine uh, that was uh, a really big deal pine tree, and that was and I was like, this is you cannot let anything happen to this tree, and it was already styled and everything. It was like there's nothing I can actually do to that tree because I'm an amateur. It's the pro. As long as it doesn't need anything, don't freaking touch it. You know, like you go near it, and the little voice inside of your head goes, don't touch that. So what really came a long way towards helping me in a kind of a funny way was a tree that I refer to as Simply P. When I got it, it was a sight. And it was, um, I liked it, but I wouldn't say I loved it. I certainly wasn't intimidated by it. And at one point, when that began to be my healthiest pine tree, uh, I was going, what is it you're doing that's making this one happier than the ones you're crazy about? And I went, you're not watering as much as the ones you're crazy about. And it was also right after that that I got crazy about the tree. But it had already started off well. We'd already gotten we'd already gotten the bicycle rolling with the training wheels off and we're, and we're pedaling our way down uh, Japanese Black Pine Avenue. And what I would say is having more than one Japanese Black Pine uh, is a big help if you uh, want to figure out how to grow these. What I was telling somebody just a few days ago was buy a bunch of cheap ones. Like what you saw me do, I had I got 10 trees, I think for about $60 with shipping. And they were superior, superior product trees. And um, that just gives you carte blanche to bend and fold and there's not going to be one less bonsai in the world if that doesn't go well, but there's definitely going to be a few more bonsais in the world if it does. And um, another black pine person, if that goes well. So I would say having more than one tree, otherwise uh, otherwise you kind of tend to stand over them with a watering can in your hand or, you know, waiting to do something to it next time and you overdo stuff, you, you care it to death. So yeah, all right. That's just all we're going to do to that tonight. Uh, I did uh, 15, 20 minutes worth of work and shot the shoot for another for another 10 minutes. So that's about us. We'll get another couple of more pine trees out and work on them. And we've got some other little projects coming up. And I've got a design idea that I'm thinking about that was really going to take our balcony to the next level. I don't really know. It's... I'm surprised I hadn't thought of this earlier anyway. Like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. That will certainly help our uh that will certainly help our uh our uh algorithms and all those rhythms and all that AI stuff. And our next drop will be this will probably be our Friday drop or a Thursday drop. So our next drop will be probably this weekend. And uh yeah, I look forward to that and uh thank you so much for watching.